Today, we are going to tell you how whole exome sequencing is used to identify the cause of rare diseases. At Tijan Center for Rare Childhood Disorders, or C4RCD, we use the latest advances in genomic technology to bring our discoveries from the laboratory bench to the patient's bedside. How is it possible that a blood sample can identify the cause of a child's disease after so many other routes failed? Through a process called whole exome sequencing. At the C4RCD, hundreds of families and counting have been sequenced. Whole exome sequencing looks at over 20,000 different genes can you believe that is only 1 to 2% of your genome? The exome is the most important part of the genome because it encodes for protein, the building blocks of life. Since proper functioning of proteins is essential for a healthy person, a change in the exome is enough to make the protein defective and be the cause of a rare disease. There are over 7,000 known rare diseases, and as much as 80% of these are caused by faulty genes. Despite the implication of the word rare, a rare disease is not uncommon. In the United States alone, 30 million people are affected. This equates to every 1 in 10 Americans, or the populations of New York, Pennsylvania, and Maryland combined. One of the first steps in whole exome sequencing is to extract the DNA from a blood sample. If we were to remove your DNA and stretch it out, it would be two meters long. DNA is made up of chemicals called nucleotides, or bases, which are represented as A's, T's, G's, and C's. Bases are arranged in sequences. These sequences are unique to you, but sometimes cause problems like a rare disease. In whole exome sequencing, the DNA is first fragmented into smaller, more manageable pieces. We prepare the DNA for sequencing by separating out and amplifying the protein coding regions, also known as the exome. The solution is then loaded onto glass lanes in what is called a flow cell. Inside the flow cell, the DNA fragments attach to the glass surface upright. If you had a high-powered microscope, you might say the fragments look like blades of grass on a lawn. Next, we load the flow cell onto this machine to read the sequence of the DNA fragments. The bases which make up DNA each have a buddy it always pairs with. A pairs with T and G pairs with C. Sequencing is performed by allowing fluorescent colored bases to pair up with their buddies and form a new DNA strand according to which bases are on the DNA fragment. A camera takes a picture of the color each time a base is added. This process is repeated until the entire complementary strand is built and all of the bases are recorded for every fragment of DNA. The next step is like putting a puzzle together with a million different fragments. A computer program aligns the fragment sequences and also compares the sequences to the human genome, which acts as the reference picture of the completed puzzle. And that's how whole exome sequencing is performed. Next, the sequencing information is processed by a supercomputer to see which gene mutation may be causing your disease. On behalf of TGen, thank you for watching part one of this video series. Now, we encourage you to watch part two analyzing DNA sequences.